Hello, my name is Kevin Finney. I teach the Introduction to Robotics uh, class at Bothell High School. My email address is uh, down at the lower half of the, uh, of the slide. A little bit about myself. Um, I am an Air Force veteran. I'm also a retired engineer. I have 30 years of engineering experience. Um, and I have a couple of bachelor's degree. I have one in aeronautical engineering, another one in mechanical engineering, and another one in mathematics. I also have a master's in education um, degree, awarded from the University of Washington, and I am a doctoral applicant at the University of Washington. I'm in my second year of teaching. This is my second year of teaching. And my family lives in Woodenville, uh, Washington. My, I have a wife that's a retired registered nurse, and I have a son um, who's an airline pilot. The, the class is, um, is, is a project-based class, um, which means that the students are handed the project and they're given a schedule and they have a set of requirements that they have to build it to. Uh, at this time, and actually throughout the whole year, we will use a program called robot, robotmesh.org. Um, you're able to code on it, there's challenges on it, and it's largely the robot's interface. And this is both online and in, in the classroom, when we get in the classroom. We work with the uh, VEX-5 re, uh, robot, uh, which is provided by VEX. Uh, once in the classroom, the students will be working in partnerships, but at this time they're largely working um, by themselves on, on a website application, uh, doing virtual challenges. Uh, but I strongly encourage collaboration and I, I actually facilitate it. Uh, the uh, robotmesh.org uh, will program robots and do a series of challenges throughout the whole thing. That's the whole purpose of the class. And they have the opportunity to program their own ideas. There's no one solution for any type of challenge. Um, there's coding and challenges that are completed every two weeks. Uh, it's, that's the way it's set up in Synergy and on the website. And I have uh, discussion posts and writing assignments every other week. Um, and I usually give one, one solid a week to accomplish those. The course aligns with uh, quite a few standards. Um, I've l highlighted most that I could find here. There's common core math standards, there's the next generation science standards, and there's computer science principles that they all align to. And these are everything that you see here um, is aligned with this class. But there's a few here that I not only stress, but I think that uh, that uh, align very strongly with. One is the Common Core Math Standards. Makes sense out of problems and, and you persevere. Um, essentially what this means is that um, there's some math that's uh, incorporated into the uh, uh, robotic challenges um, that you can use to in order to facilitate and to solve the problems and to persevere in not only the math, but the robotics. Uh, the next generation science standards, I believe that out of all of these that are listed here, uh, the one that is very strongly um, aligned with is evaluation design solutions. Uh, essentially every, it's like I said, every, every, every challenge that comes up is a unique design solution that's largely unique to, just to the student or, and to the, uh, to those that are trying to solve the problem. And then in computer science principles, uh, collaborate to solve a problem. This is, uh, um, I strongly encourage um, collaboration in, in the class, not only in the class, but outside the class. Uh, that's, that's the mainstay of the whole program. Uh, class philosophy, I've, I've made it very clear to the class that this is a class philosophy. Um, teaches, promotes, and exercises teamwork, uh, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, uh, respect, um, problem solving, uh, workload management, self-discipline, and setting goals. These are exercised on a daily basis in every challenge. Uh, the student has to, has to exercise each and every one of these in order to solve their problem. At the beginning of the year, uh, we set aside uh, classroom norms. These are, these are, I asked each class to uh, not 
to basically document, send, send me three or four norms that they'd like to see incorporated in the class. Each one of these is a student developed uh, class norm. I had nothing to do with it. I gave them what the class philosophy was and this is what they developed. Uh, these are not in order of importance. In fact, I would say if there's one that resonated with everybody, it was respect others' opinions. Um, all these, uh, all these came up uh, multiple times uh, throughout the whole exercise. Be respectful for the others, contribute to the discussions, do your best work, uh, no distractions, stay on task. Um, all of these uh, came up multiple times. Um, so uh, the purpose of this is to show that we've developed classroom norms and we plan on revisiting these every so often. I also made it clear about uh, in-class expectations. These are largely expectations that uh, when we get back into the classroom, but there's expectations while we're online too. Uh, in class, uh, I expect all the students to put away and secure the robots, to clean up the area. Uh, we share the classroom, so this is a old, this is very, very important. Uh, leave it the way you found it. Uh, once we get in the classroom, uh, we'll be working in partners and you'll be signed a kit. You treat it with care and respect. Um, and computers are also uh, district property. We need to be aware of that and treat it accordingly. Um, these are all, these, we, these were advertised at the beginning of the school year and they were, and actually these were shown at the time we developed classroom norms. The timeline, um, this, here you'll see a timeline that, uh, that I've built. Uh, we start uh, working through the uh, VEX V5 Robot Mesh Virtual Academy where there's lessons, tutorials, challenges, code, and it's all done virtually and online. Uh, the completion of the Virtual Academy will slowly uh, move into the Arduino kit that was passed out um, at the beginning of the year. Uh, within the Arduino kit, there's lessons, there's a tutorial, you build a circuit board, and it's a physical kit that you can build at home. At the completion of the Arduino kit, um, we'll move into the VEX uh, V5 Robot Mesh Studio, which is a subset of the Virtual Academy where um, I will ask the students to build uh, virtual robots and to build virtual courses. Once we get back into the classroom, uh, we'll transition over to the VEX, build, we'll build VEX 5, five uh, robots and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll um, perform challenges uh, in accordance to the VEX V5 Robot Mesh Studio. Throughout the whole year, I will assign discussion posts, webcasts, and assignments and polls. Um, the students have already completed um, uh, a couple of these, and uh, one in the form of a discussion board, another one is a form of a paper. Uh, the VEX uh, V5, the, the Virtual Academy is what you see in the front. This is an example of it. This is a challenge uh, that's later on in the uh, Virtual Academy. Um, this is their portal interface and this is an example of actually it's one of the harder ones in the whole in the whole series the arduino kit like i said it's a virtual kit uh, it's a it's a physical kit that yeah, the student should have in his possession right now and there's a picture of it and uh to the left is a is a pdf that i've downloaded onto their school g site it gives de very detailed instructions on how to build it, and not only that, but it, uh, the lessons that it performs. And when we're done with the, the virtual academy, we'll move right onto this, and they'll they'll continue um, they'll, they'll build these in accordance to the instructions. Uh, when we start uh, transitioning from the Arduino kit to build it, to building virtual robots, this is an example of the interface that they'll use. It's a subset, like I said, of the Virtual Academy. I've already shown it to them. Um, they seem to be eager to do it. And where it's on this, they can build virtual robots and build a virtual course. Now, when we get back into the classroom, this is uh, an example of um, a VEX V5. This is an assembled VEX V5 that's in class right now. It's actually in my, in my office. And uh, this is the only example there. There, everything else is brand new. And there's the PDF of how to build it instructions. 
So the class is largely self-paced, um, which means that every student works at their own pace and completes their own, own, own space. This, this not only encourages collaboration, but it encourages communication. And um, I've got it set up to where I've given them time in the class that they can collaborate and share ideas between each other. This is a typical day uh, where the period uh, length is uh, an hour and 20 minutes. At the front end, I spend about 20 minutes lecturing and going through material. And then uh, after the lecture, we stay in the main channel, which is where everybody is. And I answer questions and everybody's working on projects. About halfway through that, um, I break everybody out in the breakout rooms where they can actually share screens and um, collaborate and communicate among themselves and come up with solutions. This has proven to be uh, uh, very effective in that they can work in small groups. So we transition from, le from a lecture environment uh, where everybody's in involved and we stay in the main channel uh, where everybody's involved and we answer questions and then we, they break up into breakout rooms. At the end, they come back to the main channel where we answer questions and debrief. If there's any questions that come up uh, throughout the class, they have, there's two opportunities for the students to ask questions. In the classroom, um, I first ask them, um, I first direct them to collaborate with other students if they have questions. There's also, I've built a discussion board in the Schoology website for them to uh, present their problems and ask questions. They have an opportunity to go into the breakout rooms and, and answer questions as well. There's also email um, that they can use to ask other, question, other questions of other students. And they can use any other forms that they have available. Uh, for questions that uh, are more geared to, to me, I have office hours uh, every Wednesday between 8 and 9.15, uh, which I've started at the beginning of the year. There's, they can email me, which a lot of students do. And then there's during the classroom Zoom session, uh, which there's some students that ask me uh, during the main, main channel uh, phase and largely they just um, invite me to their breakout room. And then there's by appointment and I'm available at any time to, uh, for anybody to have any appointments with me. That's, um, that's pretty much it. That's the whole curriculum. Um, if there's any questions, there's my email address. And um, have a good day. Thank you.